Okay. Good morning. It's an honor to be here. I'm Nella Henley, a medical student from Wake Forest School of Medicine, representing the Heart Pathway Implementation Investigative Team, which is led by Dr. Simon Mahler. I have nothing to disclose. This study was funded by the Donahue Foundation and the AAMC. Dr. Mahler, the PI, and Dr. Miller have the following disclosures. We see patients with chest pain every day in U.S. emergency departments. In fact, seven to nine million patients present with chest pain to U.S. emergency departments every year. More than half of these patients are admitted to observation units or hospital wards for a workup, which costs about 10 to 13 billion dollars annually. Despite all of this, less than 10% of patients have a final diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome. Pro providers fear missing an MI, but this means that we massively over triage patients with chest pain to be admitted for a workup, which contributes to ED crowding, it's expensive, and most importantly, it exposes low-risk patients to unnecessary testing and potential harms. To solve this problem, several accelerated diagnostic protocols were developed for patients with symptoms concerning for ACS, one of which is the heart pathway. It's based on a modified heart score within an algorithm designed to identify low-risk patients for early discharge without any further objective cardiac testing. This is the heart pathway. The first step is to use the EKG to identify STEMI or any acute ischemic changes. If the patient does not have ischemic changes or any history of prior coronary artery disease, then a HERE score will be calculated based off of their history, EKG, age, and risk factors. If the HERE score is less than or equal to three and serial troponins are negative, then the patient is identified as low risk by the heart pathway and should be considered for early discharge without further objective cardiac testing. Our, our heart pathway team has has demonstrated that use of the heart pathway compared to usual care decreases hospitalization, testing, length of stay, and cost. And while the heart pathway is well validated, there is limited data on how it performs in key subgroups, such as women and non-white patients. We know that there are health disparities among women and non-white patients in regards to cardiac testing and it's possible that the safety and effectiveness of the heart pathway may differ among these subgroups. Therefore, the objective of our study is to compare the safety and effectiveness of the heart pathway among women and men, as well as non-white and white patients who present to the ED with acute chest pain. We performed a pre-planned subgroup analysis of the heart pathway implementation study, a prospective pre and post interrupted time series design conducted at three sites in North Carolina. Participants included adult patients, 21 years or older, with possible ACS who did not have ST elevation on EKG. During the 12-month pre-implementation period, participants were treated with the usual care. A three-month wash-in was used to train providers and integrate the heart pathway decision tool into the electronic medical record. During a 12-month post-implementation period, Patients in the cohort were risk stratified using the heart pathway decision tool. This was a pragmatic study design using electronic surveillance. The health system's EMR, insurer's claims, and the North Carolina death index were used to extract patient variables and outcome data. This included patient demographics, past medical history, heart pathway assessments, troponin results, cardiac testing, hospitalization, MI, and vital status. The heart pathway was integrated into the EMR as an interactive clinical decision support tool. An interruptive pop-up alert prompted providers to complete a heart pathway assessment to risk stratify patients with chest pain. Our primary safety outcome was the composite of death or MI at 30 days. Secondary endpoints included death, MI, coronary revascularization, and major adverse cardiac events. MACE was defined as a composite of these secondary endpoints. The primary effectiveness outcome was hospitalization at 30 days. Secondary endpoints included objective cardiac testing, such as stress testing, coronary CT angiography, or invasive coronary angiography, and early discharge rate. To analyze our data, we used Fisher's exact test 
to compare proportions between sexes and races. Multivariable logistic, logistic regression models were used to evaluate the interactions of ADP implementation with sex or race for study outcomes. In addition, logistic models were used to generate adjusted odds ratios for 30-day outcomes within subgroups. Over the course of our study, more than 8,000 patients were accrued. 54% were female and 34% non-white, with a median age of 54. The proportions of female and non-white patients in the pre- and post-implementation cohorts were not statistically different. A key finding in this analysis is that women are more likely than men to be identified as low risk by the heart pathway. Similarly, non-white patients are more likely than white patients to be identified as low risk. Among low risk patients, there is no difference among subgroups in our primary safety outcome of death or MI at 30 days. Also, the heart pathway had similar reductions in hospitalization across all subgroups. There are some key confounders that may explain differences in performance of the heart pathway among subgroups. Known CAD, peripheral vascular disease, hyperlipidemia, and smoking were all lower among women compared to men and among non-white compared to white patients. After heart pathway implementation, when adjusting for potential confounders, including but not limited to those on the prior slide, index MI was diagnosed more frequently among women and white patients, but not men or non-white patients. The interaction terms within subgroups did not reach statistical significance. For our primary safety outcome of death or MI at 30 days, there was a significant adjusted odds ratio among women and white patients, but not men or non-white patients. However, this was driven by those differences in index MI. And again, there were no significant interactions. For our primary effectiveness outcome, hospitalization at 30 days, adjusted odds ratios were significant among female, non-white, and white patients. This indicates that heart pathway implementation reduced hospitalization among each of these subgroups except males when adjusting for potential confounders. Again, there were no significant interactions. This study has limitations. The pre and post implementation design is susceptible to time trends. In addition, while our three sites were diverse in size and location, our results might not be generalizable to all US health systems. Also, use of electronic data capture may have decreased event rates compared to traditional methods of follow-up. And finally, while our subgroup analyses were pre-planned, the study was not designed to explain why differences in risk classification by the heart pathway occurred. This could be due to implicit biases that exist within the healthcare system, or it could be that women and non-white patients are more likely to present with atypical signs and symptoms of ACS, which might affect their risk stratification. Further research and future studies are needed to explain why these differences in risk stratification by the heart pathway occur. In conclusion, implementation of the heart pathway led to fewer hospitalizations and a very low rate of MACE in low-risk patients, regardless of sex or race. An important finding after implementation is that women and non-white patients are more likely to be classified as low-risk by the heart pathway, meaning they should be considered for, for early discharge without any further objective cardiac testing. Despite these differences, this study shows that use of the heart pathway is safe and effective among these subgroups. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Henley. May I call you Ms. Henley? Yeah, absolutely. Or maybe your first name. You're my daughter's age, so maybe I could call you by your first name. <laughs> Abstract is open for questions. Please identify yourself. We'll go with the first, um, Mike. Hi, uh, Elise Lovell, Advocate Christ Medical Center in Chicago. Very nice work. A question for you is, how did you define race? So we defined, so we um, had race and we controlled actually for ethnicity, but race was 
defined as kind of white and non-white, and it was basically depending on what the patient identified as. So it's self-identified based on the electronic medical record? Yes, self-identified. Thank you. Second, Mike. Um, thank you very much for the, uh, the presentation. I'm Richard Nowak from Henry Ford Health System in Detroit. My question is, it's a limitation. So you've not considered the impact of the newer high sensitivity cardiac troponins on the heart pathway. And actually, if you talk to Barbara Bacchus, who developed it, they would suggest that you need to redevelop the heart pathway in the context of high sensitivity cardiac troponins. We've actually been involved in a multi-center U.S. trial and looking at 30-day uh, outcome in terms of all-cause uh, death and AMI. And it turns out that if you have a high-sensitivity cardiac troponin below the level of quantification or slightly above it with a small delta of, say, 3 or 4 nanograms per liter, your uh, rate, event rate, for all-cause all death and AMI is 0.2%. And the thought is, is that when you get down to these very low troponins, I actually believe that the heart, the EDAX, um, the TIMI, um, they may not add to the prediction of adverse outcomes um, any more than just very, very low troponins. And I was just wondering what your commentary would be on this as we move forward. So thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. I think the high sensitivity troponins are, are definitely on the minds of a lot of uh, researchers and emergency medicine physicians. This study uh, did not use high sensitivity troponin, so I, I don't know if I can comment on that in the setting of this study, but it's absolutely something that we will do further studies and further analysis with the heart pathway on um, when those become available to us. Thank you. I'd, I would like to ask a question, and uh, this is somewhat of an implementation study. You did it in 2013 through 16, so the heart pathway, the heart score was kind of picking up then. So to some extent, this was relatively new in 2013. So one of my questions is, do you have any idea how many people used it? It was something like an implementation study. Do you have any idea of the denominator, just some inference of how many people decided to do this or just knocked it down and did whatever they were going to do anyway in, in EPIC? How many people decided to use it in our post-implementation cohort? Yes, in, in the post. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So we actually had a really good adherence to the tool. So of the patients who um, were included in the study, so who met the inclusion criteria, the, we had an adherence to the tool was 91%, which was really, really high. Well, that concludes this presentation. Thank you, Ms. Henry.